Let's look at Joshua 2, 8 through 11. This is where Rahab gets a chance to speak. It says, Before the spies lie down for the night, lay down for the night, she went up to the roof. So she's already sent the soldiers on their wild goose chase. And she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. About three years into marriage, Stephanie and I, uh, we were transitioning from life in Canada back to the States. We'd been up there for a couple years, our first two and a half years of marriage. And so we, we were in a transitional moment. We moved to live with Stephanie's parents for a short while while we figured out what was next. They also had a, a seminary student living with them. So we had her parents and Stephanie and I and another student. And so it was this kind of fun little almost dormitory we had going on. It was a fun time and a fun place to live. And I remember one day uh, Stephanie and I were talking and we had, uh, it was a, a time when Stephanie was asking for advice from me. And so I gave her some just rock solid genius. I mean, genius advice. This was good stuff. It's so good. I can't remember what it was. And, uh, and so I could tell that she walked away not really taking it in. Um, and she was talking to our friend, our mutual friend who lived in the house, same issue, and got almost verbatim at times, the same advice, almost word for word, the same advice, and came back later and told me, you'll never be believe what our friend said. And she told me, and I said, that's what I said. Now, I want to point out just as a, an addition to that story that last week we had a similar in incident where I gave some just brilliant advice. And she heard it from somebody else and she recognized. She said, I heard it from my husband first. We've grown. And she gives me great advice all the time too. So I won't make her out to be anything but, but a wonderful wife because she is. But sometimes we do this. All of us do this. We get advice and we only hear it from certain voices. We only hear the message in certain ways. We need to be prepared to do God's work and join work anytime, anywhere, because God's already in the business of working. God's already active. We, it doesn't start when we decide that we want to join in what God's doing. God's already been active and working. When God gives the message to Joshua, God's already gone ahead to make sure he can accomplish things in obedience. There are two voices in Joshua 2 that tell us what God is up to. God's voice, and what's the other one? Rahab. She tells the spies what they should have already known. We're melting in fear. This place is already yours. All you have to do is walk in and take it. What are you guys doing here? There's no point. It's yours. God's given it to you. Joshua and the spies had delayed, and they run into Rahab, who functions as a prophetic voice, speaking God's word to them. God already told you it's yours. We already know it's yours. And so she says, I want to strike you a bargain now, because I know you're going to conquer us. I want to be saved. She recognizes it. God uses her for that. The, they, Joshua, the spies delayed, and they recognize now is the time for obedience. Now is the time to act. God has handed over the city. Let's not talk about it. Let's not have a committee meeting about it. Let's go and do now. Let's stop looking and seeing what we can do next. God calls us to love. Then God calls us to action. And that word to be strong and courageous is so important because God's already gone ahead to start the work. And God calls us to go and do. Let me come back to these words, the next part of, of the words from Larry Osborne I, I gave you at the beginning. He talks about the culture wars. And he says, if you haven't noticed, the culture wars are over. We lost. He goes on, and this is from a book called Thriving in Babylon. He says, and while that fact that the culture wars are over and we lost, he says, while that fact may be a legitimate cause for disappointment, it is not a cause for despair. If our hope is firmly rooted in Jesus, our salvation, and his certain return, we have far more to rejoice in than to be anguished about. 
Jesus' promise to build his church is still in place. So is his promise that the gates of hell can't hold us back, but we'll have to change our plans, our game plan. As you look at Joshua and these spies, they are the perceived, at least by their own uh, understanding, they're the perceived underdogs in the story. They're still thinking what the spies originally said that Joshua contended with way back under Moses. These guys are giants. We can't take them. God says, be strong and courageous, but they're thinking, how can, how can we do this? They think they're the underdogs against the, the people that they're supposed to conquer. And God says, no, you're not. I'm telling you, be strong and courageous. Go in. That's my command. Now it's time to be obedient. Times change around us as we move to our own time. Times change. It seems sometimes like we're the underdogs. Like culture closes in around us. Like we don't have a voice even, perhaps, sometimes. But I want us to recognize this. The kingdom of God is still growing. The kingdom of God is still growing in our midst right now. We are a part of that kingdom if we are in Jesus Christ. And here's the good news. The victory has already been won. God calls us to be strong and courageous. Love me, then obey I've already gone ahead of you. Now do the work I call you to do. And what stops us at that point? What stops us from hearing and obeying just like Joshua? Well, I'll give you three thoughts on that that we get from the text. And one maybe is a little bit related, but not quite there. And the first one is sometimes, especially in church life, we have a time warp. which Our sense of time is just way off. You know, there's an a internet meme out there that I saw recently that said, if your husband says he's going to fix it, there's no need to remind him every six months. There's, we get in a time warp sometimes. The church, the church, we especially get in this. When I was called on my search committee, there was somebody chosen because they were new and they'd been here for eight years. We get in a time warp. Our church has been talking about on and off about planting a church since 1972. We get in a time warp sometimes. Comfort sometimes can be the issue that stops us from hearing and obeying. We've covered that to some degree. And I like comfort as much as anybody. But, but what, what stops us is that we're going to have to give of our time and our resources in some way. We're going to have to change who we are and how we operate in some way in order to help somebody else or be involved in somebody else's life or be involved with some issue that's out there. And that'll change our level of comfort, and that stops us. And that's a hard one in our culture because we're pretty comfortable. And the third one is related. It's fear, and it's really safety that comes along with that. I've heard it said before that where God calls you, that's the safest place. I I wouldn't say it that way. And I wouldn't say that way because there are plenty of Christian martyrs throughout our history. God calls people to some pretty unsafe, uncomfortable places sometimes sometimes. And that's obedience. That doesn't mean that God doesn't call us to be strong and courageous. It doesn't mean that God hasn't gone ahead and is working in those places. It just means that sometimes we can be held back because we're afraid of putting ourselves out there too far. Okay, God, you called me, but let me just take some baby steps out here. And God says, no, be strong and courageous. 